uh, to this afternoon session on information theory. Uh, first speaker is uh, Roberto Rubali, and he will talk about additivity properties of relative entropy-based measures. So please. Uh, hello, everyone. Uh, yes, um, I will talk about additivity properties of um, relative entropy of entanglement and some further entanglement measures. And this is joint work with uh, Marco Toma Mikkel. Okay. So I start with some definition, uh, just uh, so you know, just separable states. A separable states, I guess all of, all of you know, is just a, a mixture uh, with some probabilities PI of uh, tensor product of local states. So this is a n part separable states. If a state is not separable, then we call it entanglement. And what will be the main focus of this talk is uh, relative entropy, also uh, called Umegaki relative entropy, and uh, is of this form. Um, trace rho log rho minus log sigma, if uh, the support condition, so support of rho is included in support of sigma, otherwise it's just infinite. Uh, after once defined uh, the relative entropy, uh, you can build an entanglement measure out of it, and the way you do it, uh, you minimize over the state so here, sigma is separable. So sigma enters in the second argument uh, of zero sigma, and uh, you you build this measure. Uh, this was done uh, 20, 20 years ago, as is, is one of probably one of the most popular entanglement measures. Uh, and then, um, why we do this is because uh, mainly the relative entropy satisfy a property called data processing. So when we act with a quantum channel on both arguments of the relative entropy, it, it decreases. So in this way, it's straightforward to see that um, since we minimize over separable states, uh, the, the relative entropy of entanglement as the property doesn't increase under LOCC. And this comes from, from the data processing of the relative entropy. And this is uh, what we want for an entanglement measure because uh, we want that uh, uh, the physical uh, intuition is that with LOCC, we cannot increase entanglement. And in this way, uh, the, the measure has to reflect this behavior. Um, so the main point of this topic, uh, of this talk, is uh, the additivity question. So uh, I, I stated here clearly, uh, additivity means uh, under tensor product. Of, so if I have one state, row one, and one state of row two, we say that the relative entropy of entanglement is additive uh, if d of row one times row two is just the sum. So d of row one plus d of row two. And this is a desirable property we want, and uh, we can't expect it. Uh, since uh, the two states are, are, are not correlated, right, are just in tensor product, and uh, we would expect that the entanglement, since there are no correlations, is just the sum of the entanglement of, uh, the total entanglement is just the sum of the entanglement of the parts. Then, uh, how about, it, uh, does this really hold for any state, row one and row two? Well, the question is no, and this was answered also many years ago, 20 years ago. Uh, but then, uh, are we completely lost, or uh, is there anything we can say about this? Uh, so, what are the minimum requirements uh, on the state row one and row two to ensure its additivity? Uh, because we will see that even though, uh, in general, they are not uh, they are not additive. Uh, there are still things you can you can actually do and uh, prove, and uh, will have some implication in some uh, tasks. Okay, so let's go to the main results. Um, so the first result is uh, the following. We have a maximally correlated state and has this form. It's a bipartite state, and you can write it as a sum over jk, rho jk as some coefficient, uh, jj, kk. And you can think of it as a, just a generalization of a bipartite pure state, where you can write it in a Schmidt basis. And, and there you would have coefficient uh, square root of pj, pk, where there are the Schmidt coefficients, uh, rho jk is, is uh, the maximum correlated state is something that is a bit more general than that, but it has the same structure. Um, so the first results we can prove is that if one state is maximally correlated, so in particular also for pure states it holds, then for any state rho two, we have the relative entropy of entanglement is additive. And uh, I, I, I highlight that uh, we don't have any assumption on the state rho two. And this is the main point of, of our results, is that uh, usually if you assume that the state is row two is pure, or uh, is, uh, you can bound the dimension, uh, you can prove things more easily, let's say. Uh, so often you have closed forms in this case, uh, but 
generally, if you don't constrain the second system, uh, the problem becomes much more harder. And this is what we will uh, use later, that um, the entanglement theory has this nice property, and uh, we will derive um, some constraint uh, based on the fact that we cannot, uh, we, we are not imposing any assumption on, on row two. The second uh, result is of a similar flavor. Um, is just, uh, so let's call uh, tau one uh, the optimize, one of the optimizers, so the, the one that achieves the relative entropy of entanglement uh, of row one. And uh, here there are some uh, kind of weird at the moment uh, conditions. So uh, row one commutes with this optimizer and has positive entries in a product basis. Then for any state row two, so in a similar flavor like before, we have additivity. So d row one tensor row two is equal d row one plus d row two. So the, here the conditions look a bit weird, but uh, we can show that a large class of states are, 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 are in this set. Uh, so a large, uh, in this case, uh, like for example, for separable states, bell diagonal states, general like Dika states, and isotropic states, which I'm not describing as some states with some particular symmetries, they all satisfy the requirement of uh, uh, 401 of, of, of the theorem above. And for this, we can show additivity. Here again, we don't have any assumption on row two. Um, uh, so, then the question is, um, so we said the relative, uh, relative entropy of entanglement is not additive in general for, for, for general states. But um, the question is, relative entanglement, uh, as, as I will briefly mention later, uh, is a bit special and it doesn't, it doesn't have a nice structure. So if you look, for example, at the gradient, uh, and you look at, for example, at the fidelity measure, which is analogously uh, built by just minim uh, maximizing the fidelity instead of minimizing the relative entropy. Uh, it has a much nicer gradient and uh, it actually has much nicer additivity properties and, and I will come uh, later into that. So we were interested actually in uh, also these uh, more general measures uh, because for example, the fidelity, we had a nice continuity bound. So we asked a question, what about the fidelity? Uh, the fidelity measure is, is that additive? But actually, um, as you, you will see, um, it is not, uh, but uh, we, could, we could say more. Actually, um, we can define in a similar flavor uh, a relative entropy. Okay, here are many Ds, but uh, this D of rho now we minimize over sigma separable of D rho sigma. In this case, D is not uh, the, relative uh, the Umegaki relative entropy I described before, but can be any, um, in, in the literature it's called quantum relative entropy, uh, that is just any quantity, very general, that satisfies three properties. And you can see the first property is the data processing inequality. So it contracts under quantum channels acting on both arguments. And this is why we like uh, this construction because uh, inherits the uh, monotonicity under LOCC in this way. And then we have this additivity under tensor product and normalization conditions that are, are part of the Zybor uh, properties we would require in general. But we don't have any um, near, uh, nice characterizations of these quantum relative entropies. It's really something very general, just that satisfy this property. And what we could show is that uh, this monotone is, uh, is not additive for general states. So whatever you do and uh, whatever relative entropy you can consider, um, you, will, you, will, you won't find anything additive in this way. And the way we show is that we show that we we take two example, uh, two, two bipartite states, uh, this uh, Werner states, and we show that for dimension big enough, uh, uh, D of the tensor product, rho, uh, rho minus tensor rho minus, uh, for big dimension is almost D of rho minus. So it's, it's different than twice the quantity that uh, we would get with additivity. And also the bad news is that also when we, when we minimize over PP states, uh, that uh, is usually also a nicer to a set that is nicer to handle than the separable states. Here, not uh, the one with pos positive partial transpose. Um, we we will get this that uh, nothing is additive, nothing that is uh, quantum relative entropy and minimize uh, the monotone built in this way. So okay, so nothing is additive, but uh, what about the other monotones? As I mentioned before. Uh, there is this nice fidelity, but in entanglement theory, there are many other monotones. And can we extend our additivity results for the relative entropy um, to, to other entanglement monotones, just more or less in the similar flavor uh, as we did before? 
so here, okay, here uh, it's kind of a zoo. So we, we can introduce this big um, family. We call it, uh, it's called in the literature, Alpha D Rennie Relative Entropy. And we did, it, we did this because we wanted to include a lot of mono, the, the more monotons we, we, we kind of wanted and also are studying in the literature. And they have, uh, it's a kind of relative entropy, or if you're f familiar with, uh, uh, it includes uh, sandwiched and pet uh, Rennie divergences, not going into the details, but it has this, this form and depends on these two parameters, alpha and d. And uh, as, as I mentioned later, this is, this is just to, to be very general and extend our results on the relative entropy. And in the same way, we just minimize over the set of separable states to build our monoton because, uh, because in a similar way, this d alpha z for all value of alpha, alpha z uh, satisfies this data processing inequality. So, so in this way, we, we kind of build this a nice entanglement monotons. And so here is a bit of a zoo, but uh, for, for the ones you know, on the diagonal, we would have the, the sandwich Rennerty entropy. Then on z equal to one, this alpha z graph, we would have the pet. Uh, ma ma many of them are included there. I'm, I'm not gonna uh, go into, into details, but. Uh, so here are, are just a few examples. For example, alpha equal to one and z equal to zero, we have the relative entropy of entanglement I just discussed before. For alpha equal to z equal to infinity, we have this called uh, generalized rogue robustness. So in this, uh, this monoton just quantifies the entanglement in this, the following way. So we take our entangled state and we mix it with the separable states and we check how, how, how much we can mix till it gets separable. So this state omega, uh, I'm not going, uh, this is the definition, but uh, so the, the physical way is this one uh, and we check uh, how much noise we can, we can add till it gets separable and the more it's entangled, the more it's resilient to this uh, addition of noise. And uh, finally, uh, the point alpha z equal to one alpha, we have uh, what I called before the, the the ge geometric measure of entanglement, which is built on, on the fidelity. So for pure state is just uh, the maximum overlap with a product state, so a pure uh, separable state. And then for the mixed state, uh, you have this kind of convex roof construction. I'm not going to the details, but uh, for those one who know, it's related to the, to the um, D one half one half, which is uh, minus log fidelity. So this way, uh, you just calculate entanglement, you just check uh, the distance from the set of separable states in terms of the fidelity distance and the, 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 the farther uh, is from the set of separable states in terms of the fidelity, then the more is entangled. And uh, we can have the same results. So this is not uh, usually clear, but uh, we can show that if one state is, is maximally correlated state, that for any other state, we have additivity and uh, in sim similar way for these other of, uh, kind of states with symmetries. So why, we, why do we do all of this? Actually, uh, we had in mind a specific application. And uh, to give you some flavor of it, uh, we had in mind this catalytic application, uh, transformation. So we want to transform Psi into Psi prime with a catalyst nu uh, with a low CC map. And we want to know what are the necessary conditions on this transformation. So since we prove additivity for any pure states, you can see here I just put some, uh, a little of math. You start with uh, d uh, psi plus d of nu, then we can use additivity since also for any states uh, psi pure, then we can just use data processing, so uh, monotonicity under low CC, and then again additivity, we simplify the nu on, on both sides, and then we will get, end up in these two conditions, uh, 18. And this shows how, how in this way we can uh, obtain necessary conditions. And one question we have, since we, we don't have any any assumption on new is, is, is this, are these also um, sufficient? At the moment, they are all necessary. And um, yeah, so this is very general. New here is anything, it's, it's any, any dimension uh, can be mixed. And, and um, so in a similar spirit, uh, we, we looked at the correlated catalysis. I'm not going through the detail, but uh, the idea comes also from the, the previous slides that we can get some, some kind of necessary conditions and then we rely on a continuity bound. And correlated catalysis just means that at the end of the transformation, psi prime and nu are correlated, epsilon correlated. So in this, using these additivity properties, we show uh, a divergence of the resource of the catalyst log one over epsilon, where epsilon is the amount of correlation. So small correlation, uh, the catalyst is highly resourceful. And uh, here you can see that the additivity result is crucial because we don't have any assumption on the catalyst. And because 
Actually, these protocols usually, uh, so for achieve achievability, you would build these catalysts that are very mixed and they lie in a very high dimensional hydro space. And so we couldn't like, uh, we don't really want any assumption on the dimension and on the purity, for example. Um, okay. Uh, this is mainly the, the uh, motivation uh, about application to other resource theories. So what we realized at some point is that uh, we could apply this formalism to other resource theory. And the way is that, is that we can recast our problem uh, in a linear one. So uh, here, uh, for those who are interested more in the technical details, we, define, we can define this lambda of rho uh, as maximum over sigma separable trace rho sigma. And as you can see, this is a, a very simple linear functional. And uh, it's, in particular, it's maximized by, by, pure, by pure states. So it's, it's kind of very easy, for example, for separable state to parameterize all pure states. Actually, uh, like mixed state, they are not actually. Um, then we can show that if this lambda is multiplicative, so lambda rho one tensor rho two is just the product of lambda one and lambda rho two, the fidelity measure and the generalized robustness measures are additive. And uh, this shows that these two actually are uh, easier. So uh, I would say if you are looking for additivity, just consider these two measures. Because if you want additivity also for the relative entropy, uh, you, would, you would need some further conditions. So for example, you would need that uh, the, the, one of the states commute with its optimizer. Here, uh, rho one and sigma one. Uh, sigma one is the optimizer of rho one. Um, okay, so in this way, we can uh, try to solve additivity problems in other resource theories. So, um, for example, we, you can, if you are familiar, like uh, resource theory of, of coherence, for example, you can easily see that this lambda is, is multiplicative, right? Because uh, in the tensor product space, so you, you don't have even entanglement. But if you just look at the fidelity, for example, it's not clear when you consider uh, mixed states uh, that, that that all of this goes through. Uh, then we also looked uh, at some conditional entropies. Uh, we, we just recover all the results. These, these already uh, were already known. Uh, so what we did later uh, in, in, in a recent work with uh, Ryuji, uh, you can check the archive, uh, we looked at the resource theory of magic and there we could uh, get some uh, results for mixed states. So uh, you can see, for example, here, this red line is the, the boundary of the data processing region. So we can show that, uh, as I mentioned before, if this lambda is, is, is multiplicative, the fidelity which lies on this boundary and the robustness which is at the infinite point, alpha infinite, are, are additive. But in a similar way, we could show that all the monotons uh, of, on, on this boundary of the data processing region are also are additive, this uh, linear functional is additive. And this includes, for example, D2 pet, uh, D min, uh, for those who know, but the, the one inside the data processing region are, are much, actually much harder. And indeed, for example, in um, the theory of magic, we could prove uh, additivity for um, all the monotons in this boundary. So for example, the, uh, what is called stabilizer fidelity resource theory of magic. But uh, for example, the, the relative entropy which lies inside um, it's not additive in, even, for example, for single qubit states. So you would, you would need to, to impose some further symmetries. And um, so, so, so this shows how, how, how this, this monotons and also why we, we, we were kind of at the beginning thinking why if the fidelity of uh, in the entanglement case is also, is also uh, can, be, can be additive, the, the fidelity measure. But um, so this is a overall picture. Uh, so I'm done. Thank you. Thanks a lot, Roberto, for this very nice talk. Questions? Hi, thanks for a really cool talk. Um, yeah. Just to check, I, I heard you correctly at the end. Did you say you proved the stabilizer fidelity is additive? Or is it? The stabilizer fidelity is, is, um, is multiplicative. Yeah, yeah, okay. yeah if, um, if for, for single qubit mixed states. So for, okay, sure. Yeah, so for linear states, uh, it, it's kind of easier because it's a linear problem because mm -hmm. the fidelity for, for pure states uh, is, is just uh, the, um, the overlap with the, 
with a maximum pure uh, stabilizer state. But for mixed state, it's not clear uh, how to handle this because uh, the fidelity is not linear itself. Yes. But you can prove that for the additivity problem, you actually re can recast your problem to a, to a linear one. And you can actually uh, prove multiplicativity also for, for mixed states. Very cool, thanks. Yeah. Thank you, more questions? Everyone can have you. Okay, maybe I can ask a question in the meantime. So you looked at this alpha uh, C family, right? Yeah. Um, have you also looked at this kind of geometric mean or general yeah. convex optimization uh, based divergences? Uh, yes. Uh, so for example, in entanglement, I, I haven't written in the paper, but for example, in entanglement theory, you can prove that the geometric ones, they, they would have the same property. So exactly the same additivity property they are also not additive. You, uh, well, we, here we prove it for any divergence, so that, that includes also that one. Uh, for, for, mag uh, for magic, we haven't checked uh, th those ones because they are usually not, usually people would define f the fidelity measure and the generalized robustness one. They wouldn't uh, generally look at, at, at these geometric ones, but, but uh, could, be, could be a way to, uh, could be. I, I mean, if they're equally non-additive, I guess, yeah. Mm -hmm. that, yeah. <laughs> Yes. Uh, thank you for the talk. I was wondering if the condition of the maximally correlated uh, condition on the first uh, on the, um, the first state is it a necessary condition for it to be additive? Uh, not, not sure I understand. So, so I, I just said uh, half of the story actually. So for entanglement theory, for the relative entropy to be added for maximally correlated state, um, we actually, the optimizer actually doesn't commute with, with the state itself. So we kind of have to, to attack the, the whole gradient with some cauchy schwarz inequality. I, I just, I just uh, s simplified the case for relative entropy, uh, but um, but yeah, like we can prove that for any, uh, if, if row one is maximally correlated, then, then, uh, then it's, it's, it's additive. So uh, not but sure I answered your is question. It always necessary for the first one to be uh, ma no, maximally correlated? Let's say it's, su it's sufficient. It's, it's sufficient. sufficient. If, okay. some, if you have a one state that is maximally correlated, then it's additive. It's not necessary. You can find uh, like two isotropic states, then it's additive. Okay, okay, yeah. thanks. Thank you. Any last question? Okay, then let's thank uh, Roberto again. Thank you.